Welcome back to Sexy Cating People! Today we're going to talk about the social implications that are behind the word mammals. I have a hint it's going to be about boobs. The Enlightenment, the age of white wigs, portrait of half naked women, and the invention of the selfie that you take whilst pretending to study. It's actually, a thing that I do a lot, to be honest. What we're going to focus about is the fact that, that during the Enlightenment, scientists really focused on organising things and especially organising nature. For example, we have Adam Smith or Giovanni Morgagni who tried to actually organise diseases. The Encyclopédie Bucket was their bible. 28 volumes of alphabetically arranged scientific knowledge. The most important thing to notice about this is that by the fact that they were striving to actually arrive to denominate, give names to nature, allocate nature in the scientific world, world. we now have a way to scientific animals, plants, birds, uh, blah, blah, blah. Most, of the, most of the knowledge that we have on taxonomy come from then. I want to think about this whole evolution in the naming system, also called taxonomy, is Carl Linnaeus. Carl Linnaeus is actually a cool guy and I'll put down below some links so that you can go and check it out yourself. He was born in Sweden and he was a naturalist, a botanist, a zoologist, a physician. He was like really a cool guy and he literally liked naming things and plants that much that he named like a shitload of plants. At the same time, apparently, he liked boobs as well. Linnaeus had the amazing thought that maybe calling a plant with a name long eight words was kind of a let down for people and maybe be like, uh, 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 too much. So he decided to invent and create a new system, which is the binomial nomenclature, which basically puts the genus and the species of a plant or an animal of anything in general. Apart from naming loads of plants and creating a new uh, naming system, he invented the word mammals. In that period and in general in the scientific community, there was the problem on how to allocate humankind in, not in nature. The taxonomy of that time was about finding a common feature so to all the animals, all the living things that had that feature. He thought, well, Men have breasts, women have breasts, some animals have breasts. Logic, in it. This guy liked boobies that much that he decided that it was a good idea to call an entire group of living things with that name. So far there is not much of a problem, apart from all the arguments that were raised by the scientists of that time, because for them it was unacceptable to give to a group of living things, the name of a woman characteristic. By using the female breasts or the word mame in order to describe a whole group of living things in which humankind was put, he gave a new importance to female and in, in general females in, 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 a, in a new European society. Yay Laneos for being a hero against the patriarchy! But no. There's another part of the story. Whilst raising the status of the female role in society, uh, Linnaeus decides that it was a good idea to define a name that would differentiate animals from humankind. He could have chosen mammal humans, seedless blurbs, uh, things, pink, pink, pinky things. No. He had to use Homo sapiens, which translates to man of wisdom. By doing so, literally in the same volume where he explains the mammal's decision, he said basically, women, y'all relate us to animals, with a man, you so smart, you so intelligent, that you differentiate from From what we know, he did not really think about the social impact that that decision could have. As it happens that we can't say that he purposefully relate, related the term to a gender. But the process that made it go there did. By giving the name mammals to a group that actually has animals in it, 
he relates the female breast who wants to give life to beasts, but by using the term homo sapiens, he elevates the figure of the man as a thinking and intellectual individual. This, unfortunately, is a clear example of how women were seen in society and how their role inside a society itself was imposed and perceived. I'm not saying that Linnaeus is a bad person, because his decision obviously was influenced by the historical and cultural black background of that time. This is really important because it's one of those times in which the actual, I would say, gender inequality started to happen more heavily and was accepted in society and in a scientific community. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you liked it. If you did, drop a comment down below, I'll make sure to read them all and I would love to actually hear a feedback from you all. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, you'll find the button here. I will see you all next Friday, so until then, ciao! Bye!